guys, it's Janice from Ozark Family Homestead. Today's video is going to be all about this process of our family buying a half a cow. Now, if you've been watching, you already know that we typically get a half a cow, but I had run out, so I was buying our beef from the store, and a lot of you were encouraging me to stop buying the grocery store beef and get that half a cow. So you motivated me to go ahead and call the lady or message the lady and get on the list. And I knew it was going to take months to get an actual cow from her because it takes a while and she's booked up. She's always booked up. So I messaged her and she responded back and said, oh yeah, we have one at the butcher today. Go ahead and call the butcher and we'll get things going. And I said, okay. And I stressed out a little bit because I have no place to put a half a cow right now. I thought I had months to get ready for a half a cow. So this video is going to be about us scrambling to find a place to put this half a cow. And I also want to show you guys just what you get whenever you order something big like half a cow for your freezer. So. You guys get to come along with us on this whole scrambling process. Here we go. Okay, so this morning I went into town and I, now I have a flatbed trailer, but because I'm working on the summer kitchen, I've got it loaded uh, full of siding right now. So I borrowed another trailer from a friend of mine and picked up this chest freezer at Menards. If you're not familiar with Menards, the home improvement store, like a, uh, a Home Depot or Lowe's. And what was nice, this week they had the 11% rebate. So anything you buy, uh, you get an 11% store credit back. So this was a good time to buy a larger item. So Andrew and I are going to be offloading this and putting it into the summer kitchen. It's not that big, it's just really bulky. I can't see that, that's where you're going. There you go. Yeah. I'm so glad we did this. We've got Samuel, Sarah, Andrew, David, Anna, Abigail, and little Rebecca. Okay. Yeah, let's see what it looks like. This is the first glimpse inside the summer kitchen. We're gonna let the box <laughs> off of it, okay? So let's get these things off the top. <laughs> now, are you more excited about your chest freezer or more cardboard for the garden? Oh, both. Yeah, we'll <laughs> use the cardboard. Yeah, we're not burning that cardboard. We're not throwing it out. We are using it as a weed barrier in the garden. Unless David gets a hold of it and makes a big boat. There we go. Looky there. Oh, but it's backwards. You're going to have to flip it around. Oh, it's in here. Oh, it is. That's okay. That's okay. Here, let's get this over here. All right. Okay, okay Andrew. Let's, let's get this off and then let's turn it around. So now everyone gets to the back side of it. <laughs> Normally, don't get to the back side of these things. This is incredibly easy to move. Decent size one. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a good size. <laughs> So, what's it say? A 10.6 cubic foot. That's the size we went with. Now, you guys might be wondering, well, first of all, why we have it out here in the summer kitchen. And I will show you that. I'll give you a little bit of a freezer tour 
here in a minute and show you just why one we had to buy a new freezer and two why I have no space for it in my house so I will show you guys that in just a little bit all right it's plugged in and it's making noise so we're gonna assume it's working we wanted to get it here and plug it in we're due to pick up the beef in about four days and so we wanted to give it plenty of time to make sure it worked <laughs> That would be awful to come home with a new freezer. It'd be nice and cold when we put everything in it. We don't have electricity in the building yet, so a friend of mine helped me basically run some temporary electricity out here uh, for this deep freeze. You want to see inside of it? Oh, okay. How big? Yeah, it's, it's a good size. Good, pretty good size one. And the two baskets, so Mama will fill it up about yeah. four days. So, and I'm going to take you guys along with us whenever we go to pick it up and whenever we go to fill this thing up so you can get an idea of how much a half a cow is. I'm going to take you inside the house now and show you my freezers real quick and you will then understand why this right here has happened. <laughs> All right, my first stop is this small little freezer here and you can see it's full. <laughs> it's full, full of whole fryer chickens. These are from those Cornish cross meat birds that we raised out this year and had butchered. I mean, it was maybe a month ago we had them butchered. So this freezer is filled to the brim and I'm very grateful for that. All right. Now this one here has a lot of our lamb in it from the two sheep that we butchered earlier this year here on our homestead. So this has lamb in it a tiny bit of chicken but then this is where I keep the Brussels sprouts and asparagus and the turkey bacon and stuff here that I get from the store this is the last bit of our last half a cow here I have some cube steaks left over so that's what the, that's what is in this deep freeze here all right and this final chest freezer is just kind of a hodgepodge of stuff down in the very bottom, I have some of our meat birds actually from last year's processing that were kind of scrawny actually, and I just use them for boiling. I would not roast them. So that's what's making up the bottom portion of this deep freeze. I have some extra lamb here that would not fit in the uh, other freezer I just showed you, and some store bought chicken that we like to use for grilling. I always just keep some inexpensive chicken drumsticks on hand and that's what we use if we want to grill chicken so yeah this one is full too so a half a cow was not fitting anywhere in here all right my final option would have been my upright freezer and a half a cow would not fit in here either this is where i have some turkeys that i got on sale last year uh, this is where i keep all that ground turkey that i turn into sausage my stash of that butter hot dogs there's a cow colostrum in here <laughs> so we keep that my stash of pecans and there's more pumpkin under here that uh, we roasted and pureed ourselves some zucchini and banana bread corn on the cob up here from last year and that store ground beef this is what i had left of the ground beef that was bought from the store so not going in here either so now you know <laughs> why we had to buy a new deep freeze and put it out in the summer kitchen well this is Sean and I'm here with Sam and Rebecca and they just got back uh, from a processor where we have bought half of a cow so we're in the summer kitchen. As you can see, the summer kitchen is under construction. And that is our new deep freeze that will go in here. We've got an extension cord run to it right now, so it will work. And so it's going to hold this half of a cow. If you've never bought a half a cow before, I just want to show you what this looks like. The amount of meat you get. Of course, you can get different cuts, uh, depending on you know how you... But this is just kind of the way that we do it. Just kind of give you visually so you can see all of this. All right, so a half a cow. So, Sam, tell us what types of meats do we have here? Well, this is 
ground beef, uh, this is T-bone steak, uh, cube steak, uh, rib steak, uh, and roast. Just different types and of roasts. Different types of roasts, okay. So, and that'll feed us for a while. Uh, actually, n not as long as, as you might assume when you have nine people in the home, but uh, uh, if you have fewer people, obviously it would stretch even longer. And this is, uh, you know, something that we do periodically. And the plan is in the future, since we have our own cows now, uh, to start having beef cows so we don't have to actually uh, buy meat from someone else and eventually have our own cows to have butchered. Okay, so Sam, Rebecca, uh, thanks for helping uh, show us a half a cow, and now I guess we're going to get to work putting all this in the deep freeze. Well, this is Sean again, and we had a little problem. So when I uh, took the uh, all the beef and I went to put it in the deep freeze, the deep freeze wasn't working. I had mentioned how we had to run an extension cord out here. It had tripped the breaker. Now I reset it. I've got it turned back on. So in the meantime, I've got all the meat in these three coolers. And I'm letting this get cold. So I'm going to have to monitor this. And if it, if it throws the breaker again, then I know the extension cord is not going to work for sure. I'm going to have to keep an eye on it. I'm going to... I'm going to set my alarm and start getting up in the middle of the night uh, to check it. Uh, but I have generators. I've got gas generators and I have the solar generators. You know, I've got a video on the solar generators that we have. So my next step will be if, if, uh, if, if I have another problem, if the breaker trips again, to put it on a generator. And this will be a, this is a good example of why you need backup power sources redundancy as well so we've got two different types of generators uh, that we have available to us we've got a lot of fuel on hand if I want to go with the gas route uh, or I may rotate those uh, big big giant battery you know solar generators as well so I will uh, keep you posted on the drama of the deep freeze okay continuing on with the saga of the deep freeze uh, Something I've done uh, to try to reduce the load on that outlet. Uh, there's an outlet there on the west side of the house. It also had another extension cord hooked to it for a fan that we keep out for the rabbits to help keep them cool. So what I did is I took that extension cord, got another extension cord, and I've led it out here to the front of the house. So now the rabbits will be on a different outlet than the deep freeze. Maybe that'll take some of the load off. And uh, since we're out here at the front of the house, if you recognize the blue tape and how dark and nice brown it looks in the ladder and the paint can, get a clue of what I've been doing today. I've been painting the front of the house. This is something that every year I pick one side of the house and repaint it. Uh, it's that cedar siding. We love the cedar siding. It's pretty, but the bad part of cedar siding is you have to paint it all the time. Uh, you have to keep it always keep it painted so uh, so this year was the year to to paint the front side of the house so this is what I was doing today I've got about half of the front of the house painted looks a lot better and uh, so that'll be by continuing that project tomorrow if I have if I find the time as well as keeping an eye on the deep freeze Okay, if you can hear me over the noise, this is one of our gas generators. So I fueled it up and fired it up, make sure it was running. It's running just fine. Uh, this is a, if, if we're going to continue to have problems with that breaker throwing, I just want to make sure that a generator's up and going, and it is. Like I said, I've got a video on our solar generators. I haven't ever showed to get one of our gas generators before, but this is just another power source we have, and I'm just making sure it's working in case we have to bring it into use tonight. Okay, I want to show you I'm charging up one of our uh, solar generators, which is basically a big battery that you can charge with uh, solar panels, but right now I'm rapidly charging it off of the power grid, and you can see right here it's showing 
It's got 58% power because we've been using it to power a fan out in the cow shed. So I've already got one that's already fully charged. It's out there with the, uh, uh, with the deep freeze right now, but I'm rapidly charging this one up. So we'll have a second one charged up and ready to go. Okay, so I'm back in the summer kitchen. So far, so good. Deep freeze is still on. It's gotten cold. So I've went ahead and put everything in. It doesn't look at a deep freeze is pretty big. It doesn't look like as much meat now that's in that gigantic deep freeze. So I've got all of our uh, steaks on the left side, all of that uh, ground beef in the center, and the roasts uh, here on the right side, and uh, plenty of room to put other things if needed. So uh, we're just going to keep monitoring this and hope for the best. Well, it is the next morning. I got up a couple of times during the night to come out here and make sure the deep freeze was still running. It was still running. It's still running now. Everything's frozen. So far, so good. So hopefully that problem has been resolved. Uh, I know this was kind of a different video. Uh, you know, video is supposed to be about buying our half a cow has kind of merged into what to do when the power goes out and the need for uh, other sources of electricity. Now, what are you gonna do if you've got a, a lot of things that are refrigerated or frozen and the power goes out? You know, what are your backup plans? And I need to get back to painting the house and all the other daily chores that we have going on. So uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up for today. I appreciate you watching. If you haven't done so, please subscribe, you know, hit that like button and share. And until next time. Thanks for watching Ozark